some of you right now may be those same people who be like, man, is this really it? I need more revelation. No, you don't need more revelation because you haven't even applied the revelation that you already got. All right, y'all. I just want to talk about this real quick. There comes a point in life where if you've been a Christian for an extended period of time, when you've been walking in the faith, when you've been faithfully following the Lord, no matter what has been thrown in your way, you've always kept balancing back. You always kept coming back. You always kept fighting the good fight, running the good race. There always comes a point where you, you've read so many scriptures and you've been to so many church services and so many Bible studies and, and groups and discipleship groups and, and, and accomplishments that you just get to the place where you start to wonder, like, is, is this it? It just feels too consistent. It feels too repetitive. It feels too religious. No one can say that they, has perfect, they have perfectly applied the word of God to every aspect of your life, their life. No one can say that. Justly, blamelessly. No one can do that. There's a complete difference between knowing the word of God and being encouraged and motivated by it and having that the word of God be your set mindset every single day and actually living it to live out what the Bible says is true what you believe to be true in the word of God is a completely different monster than to understand it in its proper context that, that's the first thing first you got to understand it in its proper context right but the other thing is to within that proper context act out what god tells you to act out claim righteousness what righteousness is according to the bible you know represent what the king represents as holy and true right that is a whole nother monster and that's where your faith is tested. That's when you're like at school and you're about to take a test and the teachers go silent and hands out the papers and you just got to take that test. Teachers don't speak during the test. Remember that, right? Otherwise, then you, the teacher will be giving you all the answers. And that's just not going to teach you at all. It's not going to test your learning. That's where you're actually built up and sanctified. You're not sanctified just by reading the Bible. Otherwise, any atheist could just read the Bible and you, you could just say they're sanctified, but they're not actually sanctified. We know that because none of that has been applied to their life. When the teacher is done teaching and is giving you the test and it's now silent because it's time to test your learning. The teachers a lot of times is, is silent. They're not obligated to give you every answer. It's up to you to take your experiences and remember what that teacher has taught you and apply that to whatever test you're taking and to the questions that you're having to answer on that piece of paper. So there comes a point where you really got to ask yourself, like, am I actually applying what I'm reading? I mean, we're talking about what's the heart of God here and how God's love has shined in all this situation where everybody's confused. And it's not that God's love never shined on you. It's not that he's just not there anymore is that he's already done his job through you and with you and through others for you for your sake and you have his word it's just that you have never gotten taken it seriously enough to learn how to apply it before the test came that's that's usually how it works and that's what breaks so many christians that's what breaks so many people in their faith is because their whole time they just have the baby milk handed to them but they never apply it they never acted out. Then either that or they're just going to shepherds who are really bad at shepherding. Thus, they are not learning how to apply that to their life. They're not being challenged by the preachers inside of their synagogues and their churches. They're not being challenged by their Bible study group leaders and their youth group leaders. They're not being challenged by their brothers and sisters in the faith. They're just being handed Bible studies, handed devotionals, being handed the word of God. And all this teaching from all these other places, all these prophecies, all these big doom and gloom stuff, all this, that and the other, all these debates. But they're not being tested. They're not being, they're not giving those pop quizzes. They're not being challenged by anyone around them. So then when God finally says it's time to test you and see how far you've come since I saved you and since you accepted the light that I've brought to your life and now you're stuck like shoot shoot 
I should have took it seriously. And what so many Christians do is that instead of taking it seriously right at that moment and catching up, they know they got the Bible. They know they can do that and start implementing practical ways to bring that into their life. But you know what they do? They fall away and they depart from the faith. They deconstruct. They get away from everybody else. They start going to church. They curse God and all of his children because they can't take the fact that they're being tested and the way God is communicating to them in that particular moment is not the way they wanted because they sat there and got complacent because they sat there and allowed unbelief to pollute their mind because they decided that they didn't need God in those seasons, that they didn't need to take God seriously, that they decided that they were safe and that they were in a safe place. But let me tell you something that every adult will tell you when they get older. This world is not a safe place. So God is not going to train you like you in a safe place. No true shepherd of God is going to sit there and train you like this world is some friendly, safe little hospital that you can just clump up in and, and just wait till Jesus comes back and say, oh, yeah, the doctor's going to come in any moment and perform this surgery. No, a good teacher, a good prophet, a good leader or a good brother and sister in Christ who's your accountability partner will challenge you and say, hey, this world is not this friendly little bubble guppy uh little house that you can just come in and do whatever you want and it's claim I'm Christian and not experience any persecution, not experience any challenges to your faith, not experience any doubts, not experience any temptations, not deal with any of that stuff. This is not the world we live in. That's not the reality of being a Christian. Jesus promised us that this stuff would happen to us and our faith walk. But so many of us get caught off guard. So many of us get complacent. So many of us completely just forget that we're in earth and there's corrupted people on earth that are not here for christ or to do god's will but are out here to destroy who we truly are who we truly are hand knit together in our mother's womb by god with a planned purpose within our bodies and with our entire life that if we come to accept god's way of living he will finish the work he started in us and make sure that we walk in that authority to walk in that calling. But if we come to Christ and get complacent and not take our walk with God seriously, then when that test comes, it's going to bite us like a shark in the middle of the twilight zone of the sea. It's going to come up on you like a giant squid in the depths of the ocean and swallow us up. The devil prowls around like a lion seeking who he may devour. And you know, he's not allowed to attack until you're being tested. Notice that when you're not being tested, sometimes you might get a little bit of peace with a little bit of trials here and there that you can easily get through because you've already passed the other test. But once you stay true and faithful, that's when the next test is going to start. This is the ongoing sanctification process. You're going to be tried by fire. Gold is purified by fire. You are like refined gold, purified in our furnace, like as a Christian. So when the devil sees, oh, you've been in that fire once. Oh, you, oh I see that little burn mark on you. I'm going to accuse you of this. I'm going to lie on you here. I'm going to tempt you with this right here. The whole life is a refining furnace, a refining fire. If you don't endure in that fire, walk on those hot coals to the end, you ain't going to make it. Purification is not something that takes like two seconds. It takes, it takes burning, it's suffering, it takes those tribulations, it takes those hardening moments to instill those powerful rock-like principles of Jesus Christ in your life. The teachings of Jesus Christ aren't these just soft, easy to do, how to DIY projects you find on YouTube. No, it's it's life or death. This is like a war zone. And if you do not know how to clean that weapon, your amp weapon is going to jam in the middle of a firefight. And you might get shot or you might just be pinned down because you can't shoot back. You won't be able to support your comrades. This is a war, like an alien invasion where if you don't, if you ain't prepared for your enemy, they're going to come and swoop, swoop, knock you out of this world. Kidnap you. Do whatever they want to do with you. You get what I mean? This is real life. This is like somebody breaking into your home. And if you have not already set up defenses, if you're not already 
and prepared to take down that threat so that you and your wife and kids are protected and be the man of the household and get up. You know what I mean? And get that sucker out of your house or your family out that house at the least? Then, then your whole family and you might just get kidnapped, killed, who knows what else? Just this walk of faith is not like this little pretty party that you could just go around playing at your cousin's house. And I'm, I'm just bringing up every example I can get so I can make sure y'all understand. Like, this is, this is serious here. This is serious business. You have to take your walk of faith very seriously in these times that we're living in. And really ask yourselves if you're walking in the calling. Because let me tell you something, just reading scripture is not going to be enough. Just fasting every now and then is not going to, it's not going to fix all your issues. At the end of the day, there will come a point, like I said in the beginning, there will come a point where you're going to read all the scripture in the world. You're going to go to all the Bible studies, all the discipleship groups, all the church services. And you're just going to be like, what next? You have to get away from the baby milk and move into maturity. That's just point blank period. You got to get out of that state of let everybody just hand it to me and I'll be all right. You got to get uncomfortable. You will get uncomfortable. And it's when you get uncomfortable when is when you're tested the most. And when you're tested the most, if you're not prepared, you will fall in the end. Y'all think y'all know what tests are now. Y'all think y'all know a test right now. But let's just say you're in a, those book of Revelation days. You're, you're in the days where you're being persecuted for your, for your faith. Where it's worship the image of the beast or die. Or you can't take care of your family. I mean, we've seen in 2020 how that worked out for so many different people. So when the real things come, will you be prepared for that? Who knows? You need to be challenged. So don't take every challenge as something to be confused about. Just know that you're in this walk and you need to be trained. And, you know, just reading the Bible is not enough. You got to apply the word of God. That training comes not just by hearing it, but faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. But faith without works is dead. So after you get that faith, that life of getting, saving faith, you're in the fight. You're in the fight now. You're in the race. Now you got to run it. And guess what running is? Running is, is, is a work. You got to run it. You've entered salvation when you had that faith. You entered the race when you gained that faith. Now you got to run to the end. You got to make it to the end, the finish line. You can't just enter the race and be like, I made it to the Olympics and to this Olympic race. And now I'm the best OG out here. I'm the best runner out. No, 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 no. The people who actually make a name for themselves are the people who win that race, who run all the way to the end, even if they don't win first or second place. If they run that race, then they will be known as somebody who competed. Because they actually competed. They actually ran on their lane and made it to the finish line on their track. No one wants a DNF signature by their name. A DNF means not qualified. A DNF means you didn't finish. You didn't do what is necessary to meet the end goal. You fell short. How many DNFs are around you or are you a DNF? Have you gotten complacent? Some of you right now might be those same people who be like, man, is this really it? I need more revelation. No, you don't need more revelation because you haven't even applied the revelation that you already got. It's time to get away from the baby milk and move into maturity. It's time to seek what thus saith the Lord and what Lord do you require of me? That's all I got. Peace.